So we move on to the next lecture. This is going to be pre presented by Dr. Satyamurthy okay. on the Pallava bronzes and the paintings of Pallava period. Born in Bhattup in Chidambaram, he joined Archaeological Survey of India as a curator during 1970. Till his retirement, that is 2006, he conducted many excavations including the investigation of Adichanalur, Tamil Nadu. During his service, he could undertake various conservation works of different monuments and publish more than 100 research papers on it. The books published by him include the Nataraja Temple Chidambaram, his discovery of Tamil Sangam age Muruga Temple in Salvan Kuppam of Mamallapuram is a turning point in the art history of Tamil Nadu. As Director of Archaeology, Kerala Government 1988-93, he excavated the archaeological site in Mangadu, Kollam district and fixed scientifically the dates of Iron Age in Kerala. At present, he is heading the Academy of Archaeology and Sciences of Ancient India, AASAI, Educational Wing of REACH Foundation, Chennai, an NGO engaged in promoting researches in heritage studies. He is also the secretary of Dr. U. V. Swaminatha Iyer Library, Kalakshetra, Chennai, founded by Srimati Rukmani Arande. He is also an expert member in the High Power Committee co constituted by High Court of Madras for conserving the ancient temples in Tamil Nadu, monitored cons conservations of hund hundreds of temples in his career, the latest being the Hamilton Police Club in Coimbatore. His manual on conservation is the official law book of, for government of Andhra Pradesh. May I now invite him to speak on Pallava bronzes and paintings. Namaskar. Idam Brittner Patakrame, Trejan de Padam, Samu Damasya Pagam Sure. Now, thanks to everybody who is organizing this event. And also, I am very much happy to share some of the things which I could come across in my service. Because when especially Gurumurthy requested me to talk something about these um, bronzes of this, the Pallava period and also paintings. I told him this was a little anecdotic problem because fixing date for uh, Pallava bronzes is uh, always a uh, 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 cumbersome or rather not uh, accepted by many scholars because when the Cholas came, that is uh, that is when they introduced so much of uh, bronzes, that is the, the Pallava bronzes can come down or they are overlapping in the between. But anyway, it's with the help of uh, great scholars like Dr. Ramasamy, which we could come across many of the bronzes, is, uh, I will try to show something that is uh, this, this thing. First, I will get, dedicate these things to this holiness uh, was directly responsible for uh, tutoring many of the art historians of India even though he was uh, the appointee of a mat. Of course, when I joined the Archaeological Survey of India in 1970, I had the opportunity to just go and pay my respect to him. He stole many advices among them, how to interpret and study this uh, uh, Indian art. That is his great uh, contribution, even though he used to do more religious work. He directly will come and talk about art and architecture. Of course, Dr. Arnold Langsam is the really is blessed by him in all respects. So, he will also say that is, uh, you don't go according to what, were, what was taught to you, but go in your own way and interpret it. See, his silent contribution in Indian art history was so great that many art historians owe their research to him. So he only encouraged, that's what I want to say, because from that point I started. Then I came across this uh, Dr. Uh, Suram Murthy. Of course, fortunately, that is, uh, I was his, uh, uh, living uh, near his house. I could meet him daily in Delhi. So uh, he used to teach so many things. That is, uh, uh, he was doing only one thing. That is, either we do some pujas or do some official work, otherwise we will teach only whoever is doing that. We start subject, subject. Oh, Dr. Ranasamy may be knowing. That is, even during his death, he was talking about Shankara the various aspects of Sankara, and uh, he passed his, that was his thing. 
Of course, the art is poetry, non poetry is art, but there are so many things now. Since the time given to me is 50 minutes, I will just try to just categorize my thought on this introductions to Indian branches. Because the, um, this event or this lecture is not for the scholars, it's only for the common man, as uh, you know, people, people who are really interested in art, who they want to know about something art, they want to take something in their mind. So some about this Indian branches, why it was made, what was the purpose of the branches, and uh, the canonical sanctions, and the warping of which are some of the subjects which is basically that is all others should know. And short chronological survey of analytical study of the, these uh, branches, and then we will come to the mural tradition. That is, mural tradition is uh, again that is uh, an enigmatic problem because we know that is so many tradition was there, but what was followed in Pallava is a little different. Or in Indian context, art and architecture are inseparable, as we know very much. And structural services, art supplements architecture and architecture also. Architecture also supplements, both, both are there. It is, we have an architect's art and artist's architecture, both are supplementing each other. Of course, when you talk about the artist who created it, that is, I have to tell something about the greatness of the artist who was created. There's a great philosophy behind it, which this uh, Swamiji has told me, that I will tell you in the, in the conclusion remarks. You see, um, he, the artist was not uh, merely an artist who just uh, made all these pieces, but they got a great background in making these art objects, so mythological knowledge, a language of interpretations with others, which we exchange with each other, why travel expense, that is the reason why you are finding some art which is found in Chalukyan country, later you found Halawa country also. That is only uh, to exchange. And their uh, more interesting thing is they know the basic thing of the folks that is that is reflected in the art and literature and innovation. Innovation is the great uh, line and almost all the reporters speak. The artists who created all these things uh, are all self-disciplined. That is the thing, the prescriptions given in for the stapati and who the artist was made all self-disciplined. Discipline. Of course now we find and that is uh, people who see our art objects generally criticize it because uh, they are all uh, conventionalized. There is a Western, Western criticism because they think it is not uh, giving scope for the artist to exhibit his, exhibit his innovations or his uh, skill. There is a thing. The builders of these art objects indulge in great structures were real feeders. That's what they would tell. They were all only exhibiting or telling something the king has told. Such as creations can only be considered as a self-proclaimed distinction. That is the thing of the Western scholars. Of course, uh, we will see how it is uh, false also in later part. Love for art by uh, patterns references, of course, uh, Dr. Ramin Nagasami is going to talk about this uh, um, uh, temple in Kailasana. Where you will see that. Pallava kings declared themselves as uh, so many titles were given to them. So that is like a um, uh, uh, great attachment towards art. They, they, were, uh, they had. The last one being is uh, Kala Samudra, is one of the titles for the, the Pallava kings. Of course, the Western criticism was there always, but now we will see that is, we will go to the rationale of three types of objects. Why the criticism came? In what objects they criticized, also we will see later. But images uh, under worship include the stone and metal. This, uh, we got three types of um, the art objects created by the artists of the ancient India. One is images under worship. That is, uh, they are all strictly subject to Talamana. Of course, if an uh, object is to be worshipped in the center of the Santa, they should form some norms because our idols are not worshipped. Idols are not worshipped, it is only the image. The idols get the status of image only if it is done in prescribed form and also the great service of the Stapatis is the bringing this uh, energy which is in macrocosm to bring it to the microcosm. So as we go to the temple, that is, uh, we see so many sculptures outside, so many things are outside, but when we enter the sanctum, near the sanctum, we, are, we feel something, vibrations, we feel very much blessed, a graceful thing, because this was the creation 
according to the shastras, according to the prescriptions, according to some rules, canons. So the great skill of the Stavati is bringing out the great energy of the, which is in cosmos to this microcosm. That is the reason why the people go, who go to the temple are satisfied. Even by the Darshan itself, is, they are satisfied. That is one of the reasons why this Talamana was prescribed and also rules of that you have seen many temples in the earlier session. Where all these temples were made only to bring out that great energy which is there in the universe, in the cosmos, to bring to this particular statue. When the, when the energy is, it is energizing, it becomes, that is uh, what you call it, an uh, 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 image. The image of the main, the main what is called the power itself. Not the idol. The idol becomes image only on top of this, is Talamana. Then, sculptures decorative, you, may, you can find it around the temple. Many decoratives, even in the earlier session you have seen many decoratives. And then another group is narratives. The narratives are there where the freedom for this uh, making it more uh, picturesque can be, he was given a free freedom. He could do anything that is, uh, that is confining to this, uh, that is a Purana thing, whatever he has taken, he was free to do it. These three things were there in the art objects which, which were created. Now, I, as I told you, this difference from ideas and uh, images. Of course, uh, now what is the significance of this bronze? Of course, Known as Bimbar Bera, it is Bera. That is, Bera is, is a form, another form. The narrative from the mythology from the farmer, that is uh, the Bimba, whatever you, came, you see outside. But when it becomes Bera, it becomes more energized. So now this is, uh, this is what you are seeing is um, actually is Raja Raja Yeshwara, which was subject to some uh, rules and regulations. It was uh, codified and constructed. So after a thousand years, uh, we go there and get um, Sitpara text in idols, proper consecration ceremony is prescribed for the idols and sanctum. Similarly, this, what the, once the idol is made and the image is made, it is also consecrated to get this uh, sanction from the Sitpara text also. The artistic uh, conceptions outside this inner circumference are artistic creations mostly for educating the visitors. So outside what you are seeing in the temple, it is for give, bringing and uh, educating the people who are all going there. That is the reason you are seeing that the Salamana is not performed outside the Santa. Associated with the myths and legends, that's on outside. And mostly the pillar sculptures form this group. Pillar sculptures, wall sculptures, and outside the sculptures. They're all uh, not having anything that is uh, with the puja, with the main thing. They, they are free, they are, there was freedom. Of course, uh, what are the things which they have selected for this such a thing? Sila, Daru, Panchaloka, Ashtada. These are the sculptures made in ancient India. Sila and Daru have the significance, context in which they, are, they exist. Sila is if it's inside the sanctum, it is sanctified. If it's outside, it is not sanctified. Installed inside the sanctum or in the position of Panchayat and Akosta Devatas, they are lively, they go to life, they, they, have, they energize everybody. Many Sipa texts like says Kamika, so many Agamas uh, that is um, prescribed the methodology by which it is doing. These are all not having that is uh, anything, it's all uh, very narratives. They just tell you, inspire you to know about uh, the main shrine, main Shiva. It gives you a scope to understand the various leelas of Shiva. If you go to Vishnu, there is the Jasavatara of Vishnu, like that. Of course, now coming to our topic, that is today's topic about uh, these branches. Why bronzes are so important? Bronzes are not different from this, uh, the stone sculptures because of the only reason. Bronzes were created only for specific purposes. Bronzes were caused as Utsava Veras or processional deities representing the main prime deity and they have a functional aspect. Of course, they are not merely created, they are created representing the main deity itself. Of course, uh, the text like Vishnu Samhita that is provide equal status to the bronzes as the main deity. Of course, uh, even if you go to the temples, if you go to Kerala, they still observe. That is, uh, if the processional deity is taken out, there is no worship to the main deity. They will close the main deity. Again, it has, they have to come back and transfer the power to the main deity. The main powers in the main deity is taken to the processional deity, and the processional deity is taken outside. 
So during the procession, there is no that is power inside. It's supposed to be having no power. This is Vishnu Samhita is very perfect, and this is being observed. That is uh, in many of the temples. Considers lively God. The stakeholders have the emotional value. That is the reason why the emo these branches are very important. That is because it is equal and as as the main deity itself. All religious ceremonies are observed for this also. With some else, so many things are observed as the main deity is having the importance as the as, as it is that. Individual cases like say, of course they were having in Tamil Nadu some temples with this in Nadu the temple in Chidambaram and many temples there were including the let us say Ayappa temple and some other but the branch itself is the main deity. Of course this is very valid point for uh, Dr. Narsamisar to get back this um, Siobaram Nandraja. Of course he fought that is uh, this is a continued practice that is uh, that is once it is installed it is lively. That is, uh, the bronzes were installed inside only for the specific purpose of that is uh, having the worship. He he proved in the Latin court in the, in the, in the courts that is, uh, it was having the same status as it was um, uh, there when it was um, uh, rather consecrated. And one of the reasons the court appreciated his uh, argument and gave back this uh, the growth uh, great is uh, to the Raja pieces of uh, that is um, Shiva Param and Parithiyo. Of course, these are the decorators, narrators. We find many narrators. They don't know much of these things. It is only to see, know about the middle class person. Innovations in India are subject to specifications in part text. Of course, we find the innovations uh, as we, uh, as I told you earlier. Artists could exhibit skill and innovations that is in in, in subject to that is uh, certain conditions. His interpretations of sculptures are as uh, microscopically viewed in that background only really good to see it. But you should not see it. That is uh, isolated from the temple or isolated from the mythology. Mythology is there, but he ha he. That is the reason why each and every school has got their own. That is a difference in exhibiting some of the things, some of the uh, narratives, some of the Purana things. Of course, the Pallavas in this particular case are also very superior. In uh, we find, of course, uh, I was with uh, Sivara Murthy. He used to say that is. Uh, Pallavas had a great uh, that is uh, tradition of copying these uh, the earlier paintings. Of course, according to him, this worship was only that is in the painting form and earlier form. So he, the Pallavas, when they introduced the stone medium, they were they had the great advantage of uh, copying it from this uh, or having the visualizing or having the exercise of doing it from the paintings. So. They made it more that is uh, that is uh, animated things. We find them in Mahabharata, uh, Mandira, any other thing in Mahabharata or even the early Pallava sculptures. They were all animated, just like this uh, modern animations done in the TV or whatever is there. They are animated. But when the Cholas came, these animations stopped. So they could do more in this in the bronzes uh, than in the stone sculptures. That was his uh, conclusions. A comprehensive approach is needed to understand the uh, theology behind it. Of course, as you know, financially, you know, of course, uh, you would have seen it yesterday also. How it was a very wonderful thing. This is easy, as you have seen uh, in many of the places. It's not all animated. That is, uh, the characters speak within themselves. There is interaction, interactions. There is a response. If this, uh, he is, uh, if she is shooting, that is how this uh, Maksha is looking at it. This animation was the great contribution. And the Cholas in stone of the Pallavas in stone. Of course, we find very less in later period. Of course, coming to the our period, so Tharanath, the son of the art critic, sixteen zero eight years old, he wrote about the Indian art history. Wherever the Buddhism provides skillful artists like that, that is uh, according to him, that is uh, they brought this uh, the Buddhist people brought this artist scheme to the especially to South India. And he is uh, and the Malayas when the foreigner came, especially the Muslims came for ruling. Of course, Mughals came. That it was uh, it disappeared. The artists disappeared. Later, unskillful artists came to front. That is the reason why we are finding that we are not finding that is uh, as it was in earlier period. Of course, coming to our uh, today's talk about this uh, uh, the bronzes of uh, Pallava period. This Buddhavani branches is supposed to be one of the earliest branches. Buddhavani is a place name. A rich collection of Buddhist branches of one feet to two feet. I have discovered the excavations in Buddhavani Krishna district. 
This is reported in uh, 1920 or 25. So from that time it was also, most of them have gone to the British Museum. Probably we don't have any fees in India. Gettable to this uh, 6th century CE, hence the earliest bronzes of South India. It's also not only merely uh, Pallava bronzes, it's also supposed to be earliest bronzes. Of course, Treasury Wala collections, another collection from Treasury Wala was having one beautiful Sivakama Sundari, that about the Pallava period, but of course it was not published, only it's reported in this Treasury Wala um, uh, by UNAMIS reports. This work was lesser noticed than those of, uh, that is carved in the rocks of Mamalabram. Shalakram, which who could see both, he, she compared it with this um, art of uh, Pallavas of the Kanchipura and said that is a uh, lesser, we cannot take it as a Pallava one. Because when the bronzes are made, you cannot expect the same the thing as in stone. We will come to it a little later. The plastic conception is intimately related to the derived from Pallava art. Maybe he is telling, so again he concluded, the, prob uh, the probability of accepting it because the conversion of the stone into that is bronze became a little enigmatic problem. Akuvan Swang has reported when he was 640, found the country of this area, started with hundreds of shining sculptures, maybe the bronzes at that time, because the bronzes are slowly is later than the stone sculptures. Canonon's process, we got Manasasara talking directly about this bronzes, that is Madhu Chistam, that is Vidana. Vijayachistha Vidana means that is, uh, you know, that is, uh, it is uh, not much to talk about this, but you know very well that is when the first the wax model was made. Once the wax model was accepted by the donor or the, or the man who is making it, then they will apply a coat of clay with so many ingredients and then it will mold will be made. Then the mold will be melted and over which this, uh, uh, what you call this uh, metal will uh, uh, enter. So it becomes Madhu Chistam. It is solid way of costing. There's another way of doing it in reverse way, that is uh, the hollow cost. But we have got mostly solid cost only. This is uh, in our uh, metal images are made of from wax only. So that is the uh, reason why we, serves, uh, we say Madhu Uchistam, Madhu Uchistam, that is, uh, that is uh, Uchistam of the Madhu. Alloy of copper, tin and lead and silver. These are the five things. Uh, of course, silver and gold may be uh, only traceable and this also not found. Of course, in the, um, even in the Pallava period bronzes, uh, that is which were recently scanned uh, by some of the chemists, uh, they could not find the trace elements of even silver and gold. It is mostly this uh, lead. That is, zinc is found traceable in later period. That is the reason, that is why the later period bronzes have been taken with more zinc. If you just take microscopic examination, you can find the thing. Then Sukhra Niti and uh, Binma Samhita, they also say three ways, of course, uh, the, 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 the procedures of a bronze should be made. First, dhyana, that is set forth in concise language, the characteristics of the deity, number of hands and weapons, this Dhyana Sloga. That he was first taught about the Dhyana Sloga. He has to mention or repeat the Dhyana Sloga. That is the reason the prescription was given for him to, that is, um, uh, himself sanctify Dhyana Sloga. And then he has to conceive it. Then Lakshanas, give the post to the, and other details and particulars for the image which are found in the Dhyanas. For the dhyana, now he has to bring it to this uh, lakshana, how he is going to conceive in the uh, bra, in the, in the wax. That is the science step. And then talamana. Then he has to come for the measurements. That is uh, for each and every one. Of course, it is more uh, the technical details. I don't go into this because uh, talamana is uh, decided on many, many aspects. One is the first aspect is the, this what you call it's a uh, phase. But, there are some uh, the text which is which is speak that Talamana can be the angula of the donor. Angula means this uh, this finger. This finger can be the basic unit for making the brass. That is the reason given in some of the silpa texts also. Of course, five dimensions have been given for making these bronzes. Mama is the proportion laid down for each particular measure. Is uh, what is uh, uh, Talamana? Ninth, tenth. Of course, Uttama means tenth. Madhima means ninth. So, Talamanas have been given. You can reduce it. Of course, if you see it, 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 it varies from, from community to community, it will differ also. 
Pramana is the breadth of the, of the horizontal extensions. How it can be uh, divided, the face is like that, how the breadth can be there. Unmana represents the height and depth. Again, this, uh, the height is very important. That is, uh, it is decided only is on this basis. And Padimana is the measure of the circumference. Circumference is uh, how much it can be. That is, uh, he has to decide. Because uh, then only it can be it's made in wax, which he has to convert into brown or better. Pramana is the relative measure of the difference, different parts of the body from each. Because you know very well when a bronze was made in ancient India for worship, at least there is a 300 measurements that we check up, cross checking has to be done. You, even you, you can, Mahapadi has not come here, you can see, ask Mahapadi. That is how the uh, bronze can be made, even, not, even for army sculptures which are under worship. For bronze, there is not only 300 measurements ought to be cross-checked. More than that, he has to make this, uh, that is, uh, if it, uh, he has to give a scope for cutting also. Once the bronze is made, no, unlike stone is made, he cannot change it. So, again he has to, that is, uh, give scope for, for cutting also that is uh, removing some parts but it's excess. So these things have to be calculated and then he has to make the max model. Well, this is the thing, how this Talamana is uh, applicable, it's a modern structure. It's only height and breadth, but there are so many cross references. From you have to make a cross and see how where it touches, whether it touches in a particular point. Then only, is a, the, of course, the drawings were made, then they are converted. Of course, the earliest Pallava bronze, as we see, of course, unfortunately, that is, um, I am unable to produce some of the original uh, figures, because, uh, unfortunately, I lost some of the records in the last flood in Chennai. Some which I gathered and kept it, I lost it in the flood. So, anyway, I am managing. So, it's a Buddhavani bronze. This is Buddhavani bronze. So it's uh, from Amaravati. It was a fine from near Amaravati, Amaravati painting, similar to stone sculptures of Nagarjanagonda. Of course, uh, we can compare it. It is now uh, in British Museum, uh, dated to the 4th century AD, of course, in, uh, in Pallava area, in Andhra Pradesh, not in Tamil Nadu. This is again uh, from Amaravati, now in uh, British Museum. You can see this uh, usual uh, Vyakana Madra is not there, which generally they find in uh, these North Indian sculptures. Uh, here you can see some uh, Abhya Varda Madras is very, 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 that is which you can see in the later in Brahminical sculptures also of the early period. It's holding the drapery is like in Nagarjanagonda sculptures you can find. He's holding his left hand. So more of the very, very serene figures. As Pallavas of Kanchipuram uh, says uh, they have made so many bronzes. We had some other uh, school they have to come because then there is Bhakti movement of derived them, so both the uh, uh, Saiva and Vaishnava, Bhakti movement. So I gave them more scope to, um, uh, besides the Vedic, Puranic pantheon of the deities, they are going to bring it to the uh, scope. So they have to give the uh, branches also equal importance as, as that of the stone. Metal craftsmanship just started and the quality could not be compared. That's one of the reasons when Sri Lanka, which also says uh, that you cannot expect the same thing as it was in uh, stone, because first time it is coming. Of course, uh, there is a reason, one of the reason why we are finding it an enigmatic problem for uh, designing it. This is Parindottam Vishnu, that is in Tanjavar Art Gallery. You can see as he is there in stone sculptures, many of stone sculptures, just as Dangling's uh, Kundala, that is very beautiful uh, Makara Kundala, Flowing Agnyama Vita, Vavarna is a hand. Of course, generally, this uh, uh, Sandharaja will name it as one is Nimiti. That is three types of uh, putting the Agnyama Vita. One is uh, uh, the Upaviti. That is generally over is wearing is. Nimiti is over, centrally it should come. But here, this uh, aspect is uh, maybe changing to central one. That is, uh, that is his interpretation. And then uh, Prachinami, that is only for the Pitrukaryas. So these three things were there. But this is a flowing Ignoba Vida. Uh, we find in sculptures also, in uh, Pallava sculptures also, that is in, uh, in many other sculptures. This is one of the beautiful uh, bronze of uh, uh, Vishnu, showing loop of Uttara, Uttara tied over the waist. You can see a very long loop. And Kiritas stopped with a bun like this. This is Kiritas beautifully, that is uh, having a bun like a uh, thing. Even now, they decorate Vishnu like a flower, with a flower like that, even in most of the temples. 
smiling face indicating this is Buddha. It is Buddha. You can see near. You see the real figure that is in the uh, Tanjore Art Gallery. It is Buddha. And drapery is. This is a very important aspect of this, uh, this uh, Pallava branches. You can see this uh, the drapery. That is a double kacha. That is a, that is a, the work in even in uh, in North India now. South India it stopped. We have single kacha only, double kacha. That is a, is a usually very flat. You can see. And again, this is another another branch. That is a, uh, uh, here Kambu Griva. That is as described in this uh, sastra in the earlier one also. You could have seen it. There are some lines which have been shown. Which have been shown. Lines which have been shown. This is one of the beautiful aspect of uh, Vishnu, as described in the Puranas. Of course, um, Skanta necklace, as you see in the, uh, the stone sculpture also, is very broad. And also there is um, Assams, of course, uh, this is uh, the, uh, in alien bounces, we don't get Srivatsa symbol for Vishnu. Of course, Agnabhaya with his pearl stature, of course, Agnabhaya is again another uh, peculiar thing in, the, in these bounces. It is stitched to him, uh, another, uh, another pole-like uh, garland over his uh, neck and right hand. Of course, uh, broad Udarabandha. Udarabandha is a little broad with a loop as you are having in any other stone sculptures also. This is a Trivandrum Museum branch. Of course, it was uh, uh, lying in the corner. Of course, it published in, in, in the Madras Museum catalog. But unfortunately, when I went there, that is for uh, classifying some of the other branches, uh, I found it was not uh, the given importance to uh, laying in a corner. Of course, it was only 9 to 10 inches uh, height only. Very beautiful branches. That is uh, how, the, of course, uh, original photo I lost it. Uh, but it is a uh, very beautiful branch. If you see it, you will be taken away. That is uh, how the artist could make, uh, that is, uh, so much of artistic influence, uh, aesthetics. Seen a small branch like this. It is so beautiful. Of course, uh, I asked them to exhibit, but so far it is not exhibited there. Because uh, Trivandrum branch, you can see. This, uh, the, uh, again, there is another Trivandrum, there is another branch that is, this is in under exhibition. Of course, um, uh, there is a dispute whether we can take it as uh, Vishnu or some other figure because the um, attributes are absent, it is broken. Of course, it is also similar to that what you have seen earlier with this your uh, drapery and also having this Agnya Bhavita, Uttha Agnya Bhavita. But necklace is little different, having another loop like designs uh, below that uh, main uh, broad necklace. Makara Kundala is beautiful. Of course, uh, this, uh, the, this is also stylized and carried as beautiful. But unfortunately, sir, uh, we cannot take it as Vishnu uh, of uh, Pallava period, which is a uh, hollow cost. It's a Holocaust uh, branch, but it's having uh, very, uh, very, very interesting branch. It is under exhibition in the uh, Trivandrum Art Museum. Of course, Magara Kundalas, Kiritam, this is a thumb of some of the things which you can uh, distinguish it from other branches. Says uh, Mukta Yagya Bhavita, first time's coming is, is uh, right hand. Of course, necklace is a little different from which branches you have seen. Double Kacha, that is as you have seen, this is the two sides Kachas, I mean, not a flat one. Hollow cost, that is, uh, this dead of the 8th century C, Pallava period. Now again we are coming to another group where the Pallavas first started uh, doing it. They first found, that is, uh, the Siras Chakra. This is Siras Chakra. The Siras Chakra is uh, the, the bronze when it is warped. That is, the, the, actually, the metal will pour from the top, from the head. It, it will make a hole and put this uh, the, in, the, uh, in the cost, they will put it. As they put it, the metal will spread. So the metal, will, uh, the spread metal will be used as a Sira Chakra in the, in, in the, uh, in the uh, 8th or 9th century AD. Because later it became an ornament, in Chola branches also can ornament, they add a debt, they can fix it, put and fix it. But in Pallava process, it, it will be part and parcel of the main bronze itself, that is the early period. That is an uh, in, interesting aspect. You can see the again this Agnya uh, Bhavita different. That is for uh, the later period, the sculptures. It's a uh, Mukta Hara being tied to Agnya Bhavita. That is an uh, important aspect. Of course, this is again similar to that we are having in um, Madras Museum. This is again a Maitreya, maybe a Maitreya sculpture, which is a Buddhist origin, maybe late period. Again, this is Asana Vishnu, same like that what you have seen. Yeah, earlier, but seated. 
that is a orida, what you are seeing in the alien is now had, ignoble with our cusp. That is a very important aspect as you see in the um, sculptures, you can see the cusp here, that is ignoble with our the cusp in bronzes also. And it's a broad necklace as you are seeing in, this, uh, um, uh, in stone sculptures. And chakra facings, um, uh, uh, as generally the Priyoga chakra will be sideways. Now it is seeing this, this is uh, some improvement. Akin to Maitri of Malayur, which you have seen just now, armless and wasteless, all are having. This again is in Andarvasi, there is another uh, uh, Chauri bearers, two Chauri bearers, it is in Madras Museum, uh, Brahms, very, very miniature, may belong to the main sculpture. It is very difficult to say whether it belongs to this uh, Brahminical group or Buddhist group, both are similar. But here they have done a wonderfully beautiful miniature bronze of about uh, 9 inches. But they have done, probably it may be Buddhist because they, they transgress the uh, uh, gentle order. They put this, um, that is as, uh, um, uh, as, as it is for regular. Here they put a symmetry, for keeping the symmetry, they keep it as uh, this other Yagnibhavidas Prachina Vidi. So that's, that may be, the, they have kept the symmetry, but that was not allowed, that is in the, in the Brahminical uh, the order. So that may be the Buddhist or some other uh, uh, school of uh, thing, which is now in Madras Museum. Again, another Madras Museum, eighth century branch, beautiful branch which you have seen earlier. Also, so, there is again so, another branch from the Madras Museum. Now, here you are seeing is, uh, the, uh, the Gada. He is holding, not holding it straight, he is holding in uh, lateral. There is a thing, uh, this improvement from that, but other things are like the earlier branches. Graceful look. Again, another. Uh, so here the, the importance of these bronzes of uh, Pallava period, up to this even the uh, uh, early Chala period is, uh, they will have a graceful look, not say, Vanchi the Adagurha, they will not have a plain straight, uh, that is what you call it, Adagurha, uh, uh, what you call it, Abhayagastha, uh, they will have its little stand and even sculptures you can see. They will see that is a, a, a type of uh, things, the little slanted, but it is very graceful. That is, you can see that, and you can see in many other bronzes, bronzes or sculptures also. But it, it, as this goes, it will this tight and uh, as this 13th, 14th century in in in, in Vijayanagar period will straight. It will be more conventional. It was not conventional. It is very very what you call graceful, and Sabakar Kundala, and Gada all all as the any other bronzes. And broad necklace, as you are seeing, Yagna Vivida cusp, and three are not, as in any other sculptures. It's close view, how beautiful it is. Another is, uh, thing from Chauri Baron, maybe, of course, uh, from near Salem, it's also the Madras Museum, it's only female attendant. Of course, it's scarcely ornamented than the other sculptures. Of course, unique hairstyle, you can see in uh, the mandala. Lower government up to this knee only, not for, not below, uh, representing the, um, the female attendant of the main sculpture. Vishamaharana, yeah. that is um, also the Nandilam Talak, near Nandilam Talak. Not beautiful, most beautiful, that is the um, figure ever created um, uh, on Shiva. You can find that is Pallava period. Not it is having a Jada Mukuda, a round face, a Kaspara Vastra. Ignamida over this, uh, as you are having a cusp also here, yeah? as in either. Patra and Bakara Kondalas. So, Jada Mukada, but it's having over it a uh, yeah, flower is there, the Buddha uh, flower, which is which you find is condensed in later period. Necklace broad but plain. And you see, conspicuously, as you can see the necklace here, yeah? as you are seeing anywhere. You can see. Yeah. Lower left hand holding uh, Sarpa. That is, uh, this is the thing, only thing which is which he is holding it. Of course, we will come into this uh, little later. Of course, style of holding in Parasvan deed, as in sculptures. This, uh, the Pallava period, uh, bronzes also hold uh, this, uh, this Parasvan, Pallava, or even Sangha and Chakra with only two fingers. They don't hold it uh, as in uh, any other sculptures of later period. They hold it within two fingers. I can see the closer view. The Agniva Vita is also as in any other sculpture. It is uh, again Sthiruvanangar Swamaskamda. Skanda is missing, but you uh, see that is a, uh, they are all interchangeable. I have got a list. Padumani Nagapatnam, this is also a Madras museum. Again, Padumani Nagapatnam. Of course, Kurum Nadesa, of course, this speaks much 
about the art history of uh, uh, um, uh, especially the Tamil Nadu because here you are seeing there is a the dancing Shiva is holding uh, not as Damaru here he is holding only a Sarpa not as in uh, Ananda Tandava farm holding a uh, Agni we'll come to a little later of course what happened that is during 6th, 7th century AD is the, the Tirunyana Sambandha that is uh, you know the episode of Tirunyana Sambandha and his uh, the, uh, there were two parallels uh, that is traditions in Tamil Nadu especially one Agama tradition and those Vedic traditions the Tirunyana Sambandha being a Vedic uh, uh, child that is um, was the first uh, the first child to make his father to accept these Agama traditions so the traditions, two traditions, of, I am not going to the story because you may be all knowing it. So there is a, two traditions are very, very carefully and also very dramatically is, uh, that is um, rather bridged. So the two systems uh, came on together. So when it came, this uh, the Siva was the consciousness of both Vedas and Agamas. Siva was accepted. It was uh, the first choice or this uh, acceptance of this came from the unification of Saiva sects. Many such schools of Saiva philosophy like uh, Kalamukas, Pasipatas, Kashmir schools, so many schools were there in Tamil Nadu. They were all unified and Sindhana Samantar could make one Shoism that is of common. There is a silent revolution by bridging the gaps and bringing out a combined this Vedic Agama that is a mode of worship. Of course, that is a great subject to be studied. The mode of rituals were also that is uh, Vedic were taken to Agama and Agama worships were taken to this. Of course, uh, the importance of this is the significance of Siva, the Chidambaram. Of course, Dr. Nagaswami has done a wonderful article on this particular aspect of Buddha Saivas. These Saivas of this uh, uh, Vedic tradition of uh, Chidambaram were different from other the other Saivas. They were all Buddha Saivas. And this, uh, they had a, a wonderful uh, that is uh, the stay there in Chidambaram, of course. Uh, According to them, they come, came from uh, Madhya Pradesh. Till they later known as Chidambaram. The Vedic Urdha Saivas accepted the new system and formed the Nerve Principal Center. That is the reason why Chidambaram became the Saiva Center. First for Saivas of Ch Tamil Nadu. Chidambaram is the main prime center because they accepted and formed this uh, the unification of the two. Both the uh, things they, uh, they accepted it. So that is the reason why. Now your the role of the artisans in it. Now, the artisan simply is uh, changed this sarpa or any other uh, the object of Shiva into Agni in his hand. Agni in benevolent form was introduced as a, uh, two things are very important for uh, that is uh, Vedic worship. One is this uh, Surti, that is uh, Damaru. Damaru is a Surti, it, is, it comes only sound. Of course, Guru uh, Mimamsa accept only Surti. And another is uh, that is uh, Agni, Vedic Agni, Agni Hotra Agni. So this Agni is, is replaced completely in Chidambaram. That is Ananda Tandava form. We can see here, that is uh, this early form. That is uh, the surprise being dropped. And uh, you find the reference in Siyamangala, where in this uh, cave, rocket cave temple of uh, early Pallava period, where you find here this uh, Shiva drops this, um, simply this um, sarpa and takes this um, Agni. Agni in benevolent form, it was sad, of course, uh, was uh, the contribution of uh, the artist of the, um, the Pallava country at that time. And then it became the another kind of form, it was uh, introduced in Chidambaram and it continued. But the Cholas, when they came, they took this uh, thing wherever they went. That's the reason, till the Cholas, wherever the Cholas went, you can find as Agni as a benevolent form that is in the hands of dancing Shiva, that is uh, in, in any temples. It can be near uh, up to Krishna Valley in, uh, in, in South India, maybe in some parts of Karnataka where the Cholas went. All other uh, things, uh, Agni is not balavant, it is not a, a rather a ferocious thing, you can see. Magandhya Vendment period, where we are finding, dropping of this thing and taking Agni. This Agni is not, uh, he is not holding it directly also. We can see that he is holding it as uh, on a patra. He is Agni Vatra patra, over that Agni is there. This is the uh, Okur Nataraja, one of the earliest Nataraja of the 9th century AD. It is in Madras Museum. You can find here also, you can find this, uh, he is holding it on a patra only, directly. You can see it here. So this is the later period. Later periods, uh, this patra developed. You can find the part itself. Of course, this is a very later sculpture, later uh, bronze. You can find, but uh, it started there. That was the great contribution of the Pallavas. You find here also, you can find. 
you can find. It's not directly, you're not directly holding, holding till the touch of the lady, you'll hold it only on his, on the patras. Of course, this is the most beautiful, that is not only Vishnu figure, that is bronze ever costed by human kind so far. Of course, Sadhamurthy told me once uh, that is, uh, I could see it, but I could not take a photograph, I could not even sketch it. It is in uh, it is Valacheri, that is um, uh, Narsimha temple. Valacheri itself is a uh, Pallava settlemental settlement. But um, uh, there you find this uh, one of the earliest temple of Chennai was there. It is a uh, uh, Sattamadriya temple. Unfortunately, they pulled it down and made it a new modern temple recently, in the last two years. Very, very unfortunate thing. But this is the most uh, gracious Vishnu so far produced, we can say. If you see it, if you go and see it directly, you will feel the grace of him. You can find that is a graceful chakra, and also you can find this his hand. Hand will be not as uh, conventionalized. It is just like in Indi Pandava period. There is there, uh, also all other ornaments, as Yabamida, this uh, necklace, and this drapery, the bilkacha, and his eyes. Makarakundala, all beautiful. That is, you cannot, there is no there is second uh, figure equal to this uh, in the world we can climb. You can see, it's unparalleled. Away of the early period, so gracious figure. Then you find this is a continued process. Now, recently, uh, from Reach Foundation, we help the people to construct one of the um, uh, lost temple in Parameshwara, Chaturvedi Mangana, near Chennai. There we found, when we were digging for this uh, um, the foundation, we found the same type of uh, Pallava blood. The earlier Pallava is uh, three and a half feet high. We don't have taller figures. Of course, now I come to your uh, figure, that is uh, in uh, Singanando, not far away, since uh, you are uh, Koyamithur. This is one of the figures, very great figures created so far also by the Pallavas. You can see the uh, branch, of course. Uh, what you are seeing behind is uh, a larger form of the uh, the um, Pallava branch. It is a uh, Trivikrama. In, um, uh, uh, as you see in sculpture, you can see it in, the, in, in bronze also here. See, not, this was published long back by Dad Swami. Of course, uh, he gave the first uh, film that it belongs to Pallava period. Earlier scholars, uh, of course, Saudaranjan uh, fixed it even earlier, 7th century AD, he told. But anyway, it is one of the beautiful figures so far created because why we say Pallava is because there are some of the scholars who have taken it to Chana period. Of course, um, PRS and so many people. You can see. When the Pallavas today, this um, um, Tirukrama, Tirukrama is very important for Indian artists, not only Indian art history, in Indian religion also it is very important. Because the passage which I quoted to Idam Vishnu Chakrame Tredanatade Padam. This uh, the Vishnu is worshipped by who has raised his head and measured the universe into three feet. But the aspect behind it is, before the introduction of Ganesha, this was the this, uh, obstacle removal. Because you, you look at, you know the story of uh, Mahabali. So Mahabali was performing the Yajna. Nobody there was ready to accept this, uh, what you call it, uh, this uh, uh, Dana, which he gave. Because he was prosperous, prosperity was there. No Brahmin came ready to take. Then Vishnu came, of course, Samara is one of the purposes. Vishnu came and he said, uh, he, he completed the Ajna. He took the Dana. Then he, he did his own way of uh, taking the Dana. But this is uh, supposed to be in the, this is also in the Vedas. It comes in the Vedas. This uh, passage comes in the Vedas, Rig Veda and Idhir Veda also. So it is supposed that is, uh, the Trivikrama was the obstacle removal in early period. Even in Vedic Yajna, now if you go and see, go and sit and see any other temples, if there is an obstacle, if they even make a break, they will tell this passage, then only they will start the Vedic hymns, the Vedic, continue the uh, work. This is one of the important aspects. So this is very important. How it came to, uh, from Tandai Malaram to this uh, place is not known. But you see how these others have shown this, uh, what they call uh, Trinokrama, of course they lifted his uh, leg. What is about uh, 90 degrees or not 100 degrees? This is also not far away, the Namakal. Here you see many, many, many things you can see here. See the difference. This is the, uh, from the uh, Pallava monument, Mahalibram. His rise is only 30 degrees. His rise is so heavy. Here he is being, being worshipped. The same angle you can see here also. This is a Pallava tradition. 
of keeping this uh, same as in stone. Of course, the Pallavas, even later period also, they had made many such figures where this race. Of course, balancing, I'm not going into details. Now, I'll come. Time is short, I'll go to this uh, paintings aspect. Of course, uh, the, the paintings, only two places we can talk about the uh, Pallava paintings. One is uh, this um, Panamalai, of course, where it is retained. Most of the paintings uh, are lost because of the age and also because of the, uh, we can say, uh, not uh, conserving properly the panoramic view of this uh, one of the mountains. This uh, is the inner, inner side of the Panamalai Taragirisra temple, inner view later. These are the shrines of Shiva, that is seated. You can find this colorful, the entire Pallavas had a ideal tradition of, uh, that is um, the, um, coloring the entire monument, the entire temples. You can see the, here, the entire thing. Here all you can see this. Uh, you can see, that is they have given a coat. But technically, so we will come to a little late. You can see. They are going to courts. And also the entire temple was just plastered. That is a land unpainted. Technique is, uh, as we know, there are four points of carrier which supports the painting and the ground on which they make it and the pigments which they use and the painting medium. These are some of the things, the classifications of the scales under which the painting is studied and uh, formalized made. So, Pallava periods we have two layers, rough plaster and fine plaster. Of course, it varies from 1.5 mm to 4.5 mm. It varies also. Purely clay, of course, uh, unlike the earlier paintings of uh, even Ajanda or uh, even uh, Ellora, some parts of Ellora, Ajanda also. They used only uh, where the sand or uh, earth here, they used only the lime. Pallava used lime only as a ground. Of course, in Kailasana temple, uh, which you are going to see, is also, they are not used even this uh, ground at all. Directly they wash, uh, they apply their uh, lime wash over which they painted. Of course, carriers, pure lamp, I'm not going into details of these things because time short of time. You can see the Brahma. All the sculptures were also that is where were also completely covered with this Brahma. This Vishnu and then again Vishnu. Again Samaskanda is painted. And this is one of the beautiful painting which is just uh, retained. Of course now again it is deteriorated. We got very very few paintings only. This is uh, supposed to be, so there was a great discussion whether it is, uh, it can be uh, different types, whether it can be a uh, Kalyana Sundara or it can be, this is Parvati standing with a leg Parvati or any other attendant maybe, we are difficult to say, but having your leg folded, keeping it on the, this, um, on the, the what you call wall. So now the way how the, the painter has visualized and made it. Of course, uh, Chitra is supposed to be this, uh, this uh, superior than any other art form. That is uh, what is, that is uh, any other art, art form or secondary to these uh, paintings only. This you can see, this the, the same temple. Uh, there is, um, the, the problem was accepting Shiva's marriage because Shiva is seated here and Vishnu is standing. But interestingly, uh, Vishnu is holding something in his hand. Of course, you can see, at least I'll show you. This is. You can see Vishnu and Shiva seated. Because Vishnu is holding, holding a type of a patra in his hand. This one in his left hand, and having a, a type of a spoon or vidrini. Probably is giving argya to Shiva. That may be the reason why some of the scholars have taken it as a uh, maybe uh, um, uh, Kalyana Sundra Murthy. You can see. You can see the patra. This is the very unusual this, uh, flat patra with another hand. Is, of course, Shangu and Chakra as in sculptures. You can see the Chakra, the Shangu, beautiful figures. Here you can see the comparative, same time. It is as you see in the bronze, the same is uh, produced in the, in the painting also. Of course, uh, here you can see very closer view of Vishnu holding the patra. I think something colorful things to be offered to Shiva probably, who is seated just to him, this, uh, as in the sculptures with the clasp, the necklace, all of the things are of the early period. Of course, Kailas Nada, you are going to see him just now, but it is some paintings I will show you, that, is, uh, that was also completely painted. The problem with them, they are missed, there are two surfaces they selected. If it is uh, sandstone, they have, uh, they have gone for a, not a thicker, 
thinner variety of uh, the paste that is to be applied as a base. So that is the reason why this is one of the beautiful paintings uh, just written till few years ago. Now we don't have it here. Of course, it is with that away. You can see Shomar Skanda. Because this was a copy made by uh, Suramurthy. You can see letter painting also. How they made applied it. Yeah. If it is um, yeah, granite also, they applied this painting only, but it, 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 it refused to withstand because of. You can see some of the paintings. One more figure of uh, Samaskanda paintings. Of course, this is one more thing quickly I want to show. This is uh, um, Valachi. <coughs> this is near Kumbhavana temple. You can see. This was uh, the ruins, in, complete in ruins a uh, few years back. That is. Uh, uh, beautiful paintings were recorded by, documented by Dr. Ramaswamy long back. This was the status of the temple. Of course, uh, it was originally contemporary to Sri Rangam. This uh, temple was there. You see, now slowly we are building it brick by brick. We have brought up to this third level now. We only put the Sikara. Of course, brick by brick we have to remove and reconstruct it. This, uh, we are doing it now. And there we have find the three layers of painting. One is Pallava, Cholam, and also later we can see the paintings of the um, Vijayanagara painted also. You can see the central, central hall, central sanctum, it was also completely painted. Of course, uh, this is the figure. You can see. You can see the necklace of the Pallava period. You can see one more layer of Chola and then Pallava. You can see. It's very difficult to preserve this painting because the entire temple was also plastered and painted. Of course, Pallava, Pallava artisans with these uh, minor micro specimens, one could imagine how these colorful Pallava temples bloomed a few centuries ago. Of course, before I conclude, I want to say that is uh, artisans um, not only produce these things, uh, according to this uh, Mahaswami Ji who told me. They have a philosophical aspect also. That is, uh, you think uh, when you see a stone, you see it only a stone. But when he makes a carving, he sees a, he actually perceives a sculpture inside. So he removes that is which, which is not required, which is uh, not sculptures. So like that, uh, that is we should also remove that is uh, whatever we or we, which are required. That is, uh, this, uh, according to him, it is the nati nati theory of Advaita. This Advaita, if you want to know the, what is the Almighty, what is the, the, the Parabrahma, you cannot uh, perceive with all these things, but you can say that is, it can, this cannot be, this cannot be, this cannot be, this cannot be, if you remove these things, then you can understand what is original. So as the artist could bring these uh, sculptures back to us, which we could not perceive, but he perceived, he removed the unwanted things and he brought the figure to us. Like that, you remove all the things which you, 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 you lift yourself and remove it. Then you can achieve the great spiritualism. See, that's what he told me also. Then finally, that is a, this is the great Advaitas in every sculptures. That's what he used to tell me. So, so thank you all for presence and I'm very much thankful to Guru Bhurti for giving his opportunities. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Zashin replicated a bronze statue chipped in such a way that it sharply revealed the mystery of many century old religious history. May I request uh, Dr. Vijaykumar to kindly come over to honor the wonderful speaker of the day, Satyamurti, sir. Dr. Satyamurti had really given a wonderful lecture on the Pallava bronzes and other uh, things. He dealt it very elaborately because his knowledge is widespread because of his experience. Thank you very much, sir, for the wonderful lecture.